city of crime. Everybody, what's up? everybody what's up i am jay with guilty of crime and i thought that would be a very soothing intro for well sean puffy combs p diddy puff daddy love cuff daddy whatever you want to call him i'm pretty sure he's going to be in prison for life so i've got some highlights from the press conference of course shocking allegations by 120 people by the way and i thought it would be nice to have suge knight from jail in his interview now definitely not surprised i'm reading some of your comments what's up synth i'm reading some comments here and crime to remember absolutely nothing shocking about this case and today i decided to cover the diddy case because well one thing is that um we did the first episode yesterday and the second interview is similar but also grizzly covered it in a couple of hour interview i didn't want to make you guys sit through that again and I wanted to make sure that it was properly translated for you. And you guys talk and I hear you and you want me not to interrupt when the Spanish part is going on. So I wanted to make sure I had plenty of time. Randy B, I'm glad you're stopping by to say hi, but I'm not happy that you're not feeling well. I hope you're feeling better soon. All right, do me a favor, y'all hit that like button. This, this particular topic is everywhere, but I chose to cover it. So I'm going to cover it and do the highlights of do Suge Knight. And the reason it's particularly close to my heart and my soul and my well-being, because growing up in this time, li listening to Puff Daddy and Mace and, and then Bieber and them, that's, that was an afterthought. But Usher, um, I thought he was something other than he is. So there's a few surprises that I've come to just realize as I wasn't following this case so closely. But I did want to make sure I cover for you all what we're going to, what's happening in the now with this case and some shocking things that you all as a community might not have known. I talked about the, um, what's up Darlene Wolf. We talked about uh, the baby oil having GHB in it before. Uh, I have a clip of exactly what was going on and some other things that I think would will be shocking for this community. It's not shocking to me when I grew up and I heard about Aaliyah not making it out of the airplane and it being too heavy. That was very sus. I knew about R. Kelly and all his stuff going down. So it doesn't surprise me that this particular Hollywood community is doing these things to our children. Yeah, those are our children, folks. And M, what's up? 
Rosie, how you doing? Yeah, these are our children. And if anybody ever put their children or child in headshots or commercials or anything like that, this is what's happening. So no better, no better that if you're going to put your child in something like this, please be there every step of the way. Don't let this happen to your kid. Michelle Horak, it's so amazing that this went on so long. So many people knew that he was a bad dude and I can't believe he's the boss. I'm not sure. I'm waiting for this to come out to see if he actually is the boss. We have Clive and the generation before him. So I have a feeling there's some other big influences and they're making him have take the fall. Just like Epstein. True crime, Jay. Let's go, hun. All right. Please don't attack the victims and the minors. Yeah, yeah, right. Ooh, all right. Let's listen to this. Thank you, Petty Mason, for sending this over. It's a nice highlight, a nice, good highlight of the press conference and uh, gives you some insight to the big names. And I just said, yeah, Clive was a boss, Marilyn McRae. I just said that. I just said that I think Clive was the bigger boss. And then when you hear about all these things, I don't think Diddy was so much the boss anymore. All right, do me a favor. I'm going to ask you guys to hit the like, subscribe if you haven't. This topic doesn't always have, you know, seven. We don't have 700 people on here because, well, it's not Ma the Madeline Soto case. But I have to cover other cases, and I will. So if you guys can, if you can donate to my Cash App, that Cash App fund is going to my house. If you can't do donate to Cash App and you want to do a super chat, super sticker, Please do. If you can't afford it, I understand. Hit the like button and subscribe and share my content with your friends. All right. So let's listen to this update. 120 more lawsuits. This is a highlight. It's going to talk about the big people that you might not know. All right. So I don't think Diddy's the boss. I don't think he's the boss of all bosses. Let's go. We're going to name, assuming that our investigators confirm and corroborate what we've been told, are names that will shock you. These are individual cases. There are indeed other perpetrators involved. They will be revealed when that particular individual case is ready to be filed. They already know who they are. And I'm talking here about not just the cowardly, but complicit bystanders. That is those people that we know watched this behavior occur and did nothing. And I'm talking about the people that participated, encouraged it, egged it on. Are we talking about Beyonce maybe and Jay-Z? Are we talking about after a while Usher? Are we talking about Ashton Kutcher? Who are we talking about? Let's listen. Yeah, the list of names is not that far from Epstein. It's just a different crowd. It's not as political, but there are some. Let's listen. This is crazy. They know who they are. Not surprising. Attorneys announced yesterday that they will be filing at least 120 new lawsuits on behalf of people who say they were sexually abused by Sean Diddy Combs and his associates. This includes one victim who was as young as nine years old. Houston attorney Tony, Tony Busby, that's who you just saw, he spoke next to sexual abuse victim advocates and co-counsel at the press conference, adding that many of the alleged victims have already spoken to law enforcement authorities, including the FBI. And we have some reporting for you from the Huff, from HuffPost. The attorneys are now in the process of collecting police reports and medical records from hospitals, according to Busby. Some of the alleged victims had drugs found in their system when they sought medical treatment following the sexual abuse, he said. One drug in particular that kept showing up in the alleged victim's test results was xylazine, also known as Trank, a non-opioid sedative. He said most of the alleged victims they represent had been scared to speak out until Combs was arrested and indicted by federal authorities in September. He has n pleaded not guilty. The attorney said more than 3,000 people reached out to them about possible abuse, and they now rep. And you got to remember, when you think about 3,000 people and then it's siphoning down to 120, I cannot even imagine that. But what mostly gets me is when I hear about 9-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, 14-year-olds, I cannot even fathom it. I cannot imagine my daughter hitting the high school age and some mogul guy or some guy that works for a mogul saying, Hey honey, come here. You want to be uh, around this, you know, this star that makes videos and whatever. And then they just drug her and do what they want. I see red and I see a shotgun going off in someone's crotch is what I see. So yeah, tranks, seriously, GHB, we're going to get into all that. It's so heartbreaking because it could be any one of our children. Now, if your children are already past teenage years, be grateful. Yeah, in my opinion, Jay, Jay Z and Beyonce have fled to a country that doesn't extradite. Extra what about Harvey? What about Steve Harvey, y'all? What about the Kardashians? All of these people, 
all these people? What is wrong with these people? 